Welcome to our Holidays with Our Heroes series on Eco Ask Why. Between now and Christmas, you're going to be hearing some amazing stories from our heroes as we celebrate the holiday season together. There's even a surprise coming up on the week of Christmas that you don't want to miss. Now, on this episode, I sat down with Ashley Walters, and you may remember her from episode 137, where she walked through her amazing book, Leading with Grit and Grace. So you don't want to miss Ashley's amazing story. Speaking of stories, we're still collecting those industry war stories. We're looking for the good, the tough, and the inspiring. You can get those submissions to us on Instagram or Facebook, and check out the, sh- the links in the show notes for more information. If you have any questions, just reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you. Now it's time to get some insight from my friend Ashley Walters and her amazing journey. Cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with me, Ashley Walters, and she's the president of Onyx, and she's also the author of a wonderful book. Here it is for our, for our YouTube viewers, Leading with Grit and Grace. I got it. I couldn't put it down. Highly recommend it. It will be in the show in the show notes, a link to it here, so you can order it directly there. So, Ashley, how are you doing today? Great. How are you doing, Chris? Oh, I am excited. I'm excited. I'm love love to talk to you and to get to know you. And uh, just the, the book was phenomenal. Like I said, I couldn't put it down. I got as soon as it came in, just started reading through it and and learned just so much about you and your story and what you did there at Onyx. And maybe just get our our listeners going. Just walk us through a little bit of your journey. Sure. I grew up in Eastern Tennessee in a very small town. And the largest employer in town was a manufacturer. And so that's really where my story starts. My dad uh, was a bag tender on a paper machine at the plant. And every time that plant was sold and bought, we always feared that they would close the plant and it would devastate the town. So that led me on this journey. I became a chemical engineer uh, after school at Auburn University. And now I work in the Rust Belt town of Erie, Pennsylvania, and we work, uh, Onyx makes um, industrial furnaces and we service them as well. So a lot of the forge and heat treat in the area is tied to defense and aerospace. And our goal is to make things better. Cool. Revitalizing American manufacturing. Very cool. Very cool. Now, where in East Tennessee are you from? It's a little town called Riceville, Tennessee. Riceville. And for, for any of those uh, listeners in Tennessee, you would know the the next largest town would be Athens and that's Mayfield's milk and ice cream. Okay. Okay. Now are, I, I love Eastern Tennessee, the, the Smokies and all that. Are you further in the state or are you closer to the tip? Where, where is that exactly? So we're right in the foothills. We're directly in between Knoxville and Chattanooga. Oh, okay. Per- well, that's, yeah. man, that is a wonderful part of the world to grow up in. Okay. Sure. I'm kind of jealous. Do you get to go back there very much? We're headed back this weekend to see the family and raft the rivers and eat fried chicken. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I love it. That 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 play, that part of the world is amazing. And Chattanooga has that big aquarium, and and then you get up yes. to Knoxville and Gatlinburg, that area. Oh man, Mm-mm-mm. so much to do. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Very good, good outdoors time. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Lots of hiking and things like that. So, and then you went to Auburn. So you had, you, yes. you, are you a, a big Tiger fan, I'm assuming? Had some pretty good football years. Yeah, big Tiger fan. Uh, I met Drew while I was at Auburn. We met our freshman year, and we got married the week after we graduated right there in Auburn. So a lot of strong ties to the Auburn community. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, I got your book. We got connected, you know, really because of the book. So maybe walk us through what, what led you to writing Leading with Grit and Grace? Yeah, so I've led through two crises now, one internal. uh, We had a CFO who led with a very command and control style, and that was just opposite of our family-centric values. Um, And so turning that culture around here at Onyx was was the first crisis. And then obviously the pandemic that we're all just lived through for the last 15 months. And I thought, you know, if I could tell my story and it could help one other person be inspired and encouraged to get to the other side of all that we're going through, 
then it would be worth it. So I wrote it to share the story. I hear you. What was the hardest part? Um, I've never written a book. I'm sure there's got to be a <laughs> lot of headwinds. What what stood out as the hardest part of it? Uh, I think the hardest part was I set a really tight deadline for myself. Uh, so I started writing in September, and I said by December 1st, I wanted it to be published on Amazon and ready to go. I had no idea how many steps there were in writing a book. You know, you need a editor and a copy editor and a proofreader, and you need an interior designer and you need a cover designer. And just working with that team of people, they were all wonderful women who helped me get the book published. And um, I didn't meet my deadline of December 1st, but December 8th was close. Pretty close. Hey, that's pretty close. First time author. Yeah. Give you a seven day buffer. That's okay. <laughs> so how about, what did you learn the most about yourself? I mean, you did a lot of research, I'm sure, about, you know, trying to put stuff together, make the, make the material flow. You know, what did you, what did you learn through that? So I think one of the hardest parts too, is writing the chapters, like just listing how I would tell the story. So the the story itself doesn't go uh, necessarily in chronological order, but what I wanted to do for the reader was set it up in the way that I wish I had done it or what I wish I had known um, along the way. So hopefully you'll find it kind of a step-by-step -step playbook to help you, whether you're trying to turn around a business or change a culture or just you know increase the value of your business, whatever the goal is. I find that each person seems to resonate with one chapter more than another. And I think it's just about where they are on their journey in their yeah, life. For sure. For sure. I, I know for me that the servant leadership chapter just really stood out and, and yeah. you know, but, but there were things sprinkled throughout. I mean, I love the peanut butter and jelly analogy when you're working with people through change. There are just so many great points. Well, thank you. I'm glad it served you well. <laughs> it did. It did. It definitely did. I really, Really had a, uh, enjoyed it from you know from cover to cover and you know you're you're in the heart of manufacturing and you, you're leading a company right now, you know maybe what do you see as some of your challenges and, and other I'm sure you work with other manufacturers as well because we it's a, it's not a huge community we all talk we all get to know each other want to help each other any big challenges out there that you see that you like to share? I haven't heard one manufacturer yet say that workforce was not their biggest challenge. And this was a challenge pre-COVID, and it's even more of a challenge post-COVID, I think, for most of us. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest challenge is getting people to understand how cool it is to work in manufacturing. You know, for a decade, at least, parents told their kids, don't work in manufacturing, manufacturing's dead, it's all going away. But I think COVID has brought to light how important manufacturing is to our country and how important it is to make things domestically and have a domestic supply. I mean, I, I agree with you. I mean, we definitely hear that when I, when I talk about challenges with, with people in the industry. It, it's a consistent theme. I mean, it's over and over and over. So, I mean, any thoughts on, on what to do? I mean, are we, are we waiting too long to try to, to get to some of the the, the next generation, should we start earlier in their, in their schooling to really start advocating for this? So I think the best thing you can do is offer plant tours. Um, during COVID, my kids weren't going to school on Fridays. I mean, they were online, but they weren't physically in school. And so I arranged plant tours for them. And we got to see a steel mill and we got to see a forge and we went to see uh, Rydell, the helmet, the football helmet manufacturer. And with each trip, my children decided they had a new goal for a career in life. And it's just that exposure to what is available for the careers. There's amazing careers in manufacturing, but if you don't expose the kids and the parents too, to what's out there, then they just simply don't know. Now, I'm curious on that. So how did you go about that? Did you just call up? The, I'm sure you had connections, but if, if, if I'm a listener out there and I want to do that, something like that, What's some steps you take? Is it really just making a phone call to the plant and seeing when can we schedule a tour? Yeah. So for me, obviously I have some connections within these plants. They're for the two of them are our clients. And so I asked to do this. And then what I did for them in return was I wrote um, like 60 word or I'm sorry, 600 words, like a blog from my children's perspective. So I didn't write it from my perspective, which is very different from the child's perspective. And then they could use that, you know, for their marketing content. 
um, or, or whatever they needed, you know, internally. Um, and then I posted about it online and just let everybody know, like the kids were out there. The, the first tour, the first steel mill tour my kids went on got 19,000 views on LinkedIn. And so in those posts, I've then requested, hey, we would love to come and see you. We'd love to show, you know, show off what you're making. And uh, I've gotten offers to go as far as uh, Scotland to see the oldest forge in the world. So wow. I can't wait for the world to open up and go. <laughs> wow. Okay. So maybe you can share those links with us. We'll put them in the show notes for people that want to read those blogs and you know, when you think through, you said your kids that for each tour, they had different goals. What were some of those goals? I'm just, I'm curious now. Yeah. So the first one, um, we walked into the factory and my youngest was like, it's like, there's lots of lights and everything's going on and it's so fast and there's people everywhere and machines everywhere. And he was like, I'm a little nervous. And I said, well, you haven't ever been here before. Right. But my oldest son he said when he left, he's like, I'm going to work in a steel mill. He's like, that's it. That was cool. Like all that big machinery, hot steel flying down a conveyor belt, being slit into three pieces. He's like, I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. So, you know, he's like on the engineering path. Okay. But then when we got to Rydell, my youngest son said, I have a new goal. He said, I want to um, design football helmets. And so, you know, it, it just changes. You know, when you're a kid, they're nine and 11. So like they don't, you know, the world is their oyster. They don't know exactly what they want to do yet, but, but exposing them to all these different experiences will help them, I think, in the future. It definitely will. And just, they're getting that opportunity that so many don't, you know, just to even, like you said, being exposed to it, but hats off to you for being intentional about, you know, getting them exposed to those types of opportunities. Cause I mean, that's, you know, we could have the next, what's inside your, your nine year old's head may be, you know, the, the next advancement in football helmets, for instance, right? That could that could save lives. You just never know the, the, the impact that it could be making down the road. Yeah, so for any of your manufacturers out there, invite kids to the plant. Figure out a way to get them in there safely, you know. Um, yellow lines on the floor keep people in safe areas. Mm -hmm. And that, you could be creating your own next workforce. You could have a leg up. Just inviting them in, invite them for internships and co-ops, you know, really get in with them early and teach them and mm -hmm. develop that workforce for yourself. Now, what about, you mentioned earlier, but just curious to just expand a little bit on myths for manufacturing. Most people yeah. had this perception 10 years ago. Anything you like to debunk right now? Because I'm sure you're pretty passionate about this topic. Yeah, so manufacturing is not dead. <laughs> For sure. It is also not always dark, dirty, and dangerous. Um, there, there have been many steps taken. Um, you know, we're all compliant with OSHA, keeping people healthy and safe. Um, and I would say it's not dark. It's usually very bright, right? There's lights flashing and, and lots of automation now. Uh, it's not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I mean, it's 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 so true. I mean, that that the triple D. We've we've had some guests talk yeah. about that, and just being just I've I've mentioned you can eat off the floor some of these manufacturers, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's phenomenal the technology that's out there, uh, the flexibility. And most people just think they, you know, you're standing in one spot and you're doing this one job all day, and that's what you'll do for the next thirty years. And it's so it's, it's just wrong. Right, it's not true. And what's really cool is when you get to tell people what it is that you're making. You know, so every Friday we meet as a team and we do company education. And when we talk to the employees about the part that they've made, you know, to them it looks like dirt and water mixed together that forms a, a, a part. But when we tell them it's going on to the aerospace industry or the defense industry and, and what specifically the end use of that part is, it becomes so much more real and then they're proud of what they're making. And they can go home and tell their families. And that's that's a big deal. I mean, it really is a big deal to be able to go home and share with their families. And you know, they're 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 going to get that support at home. They may even build that next that next generation at home. And once they see, hey, what mom yeah. and dad's doing, it's really exciting. Maybe I should consider that. Yep, for sure. And we're a family owned. Well, we were a family owned business. Now we're a hundred percent employee owned. But I say, you know, that's just family owned reimagined. 
but we have five families that work for us. So, you know, okay. spouses and children that work in the plant as well. Very cool. Very cool. Now, how about you, you know, with, with Grit and Grace, you've got this successful book going. I know you're getting asked to talk in a lot of places. You know, you're, you're, you're leading Onyx. You're a, a coach, you're a mentor, a board member. When are you the happiest though? What, what, what are you doing when you have that sense of joy in your life? So for me, a sense of joy is just absolutely when somebody is meeting their goal, the goal that they have set for themselves, whether that's a client who, you know, just put in a new production line and now they've got a whole new product line that they're able to do. And we were a part of that journey or whether that's, um, you know, one of our team members here that's just like hit a milestone and had a breakthrough just makes me smile to see people on their own journey being successful. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. I love it. So Let's take a shift. We love to have these hero conversations, Ashley, and we take a turn off uh, professional journeys and we talk about a little bit of work of, of life outside of work. So how about any hobbies? What do you enjoy doing for fun? So I love to run. It gives me an opportunity to clear my head and work through things and I can do it anywhere, right? Just a pair of running shoes and a, earbuds. There you go. <laughs> a road. <laughs> now do you run daily? Um, I probably run three to five times a week, just kind of depending upon the week, try to get in three miles on each run and then have one of the longer runs in the week. Um, I've done a few sprint, uh, I'm sorry, sprint triathlons and a couple half marathons. Running was never my sport before, but when I had kiddos, you know, you can't always make it to the gym class because something happens. So running was a way for me to, to go with them whenever I could. Good for you. Good for you. So, I mean, and even when you travel, like you said, just throw your sneakers in, you're good to go. Good to go. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. I I enjoy running myself. That's, that's, I don't do it as much. My knees bother me a little bit, but I try to get a couple runs in a week. It's just, it, it it definitely is something to uh, clear your head with. Now you said you got your, your earbuds in. Are you listening to music? Are you listening to podcasts? What's going on when you, when you're running? So I really love the Peloton app. Okay. So they have coaches on there and you can run with the coach and, uh, you know, it makes me not run at the same pace. So I found that I've gotten a lot faster because, um, you know, they're encouraging me to do those intervals, uh, or those endurance runs. So it's so, just nice to hear the music and have a coach. Okay. So yeah, I'm not familiar with that app. So there's music playing and then a coach jumps in and, and is talking yeah. to you. Yeah. The coach is talking to you the whole time, telling you to increase your speed or, you know, you know, sprint and then walk, but yeah, it's a, a Peloton, the bicycle. Yep. yep. Uh, it's not just for the bicycle. They have an app that has yoga and meditation and strength training and treadmill workouts and running workouts. Cool. That's My at-home gym. At-home gym. I have to check that out because I try to do the, like, it sounds like you're doing a 5k several times a week. I try to do that myself. So maybe I need to, to yeah. get that and get something else in my ears. Yeah, they are great coaches because they're very positive influences. Gotcha. Okay. Well, how about also we love to hear about family. At Eco Espoir, we feel like we are a big family. And so what would you like to share with us? So Drew and I have been married for 19 years now. We are husband-wife partner in the business and at home. We have two boys. They're 9 and 11. And as a family, we love to golf and travel and the boys are very much into football as well. Okay. I hear you. And your family's in Tennessee. And where else is family located? So I, I have a sister in Alabama and one in North Carolina. My parents still live in the house that I was born in in Tennessee. And then Drew's family just moved to Georgia. Uh, he also has a brother in Pennsylvania and one in Alaska. Oh, okay. Now you guys go to Alaska and see him yet? Well, we were trying to get to Alaska, but I don't know if you've heard there's no rental cars. Mm. So we could get the tickets, the plane tickets, but we couldn't get a rental car. So uh, we have to wait until that situation resolves. Itself. I got you. I got you. Well, sounds like you got a great, a big family, a wonderful family. I, I, you're, the age of your kids, I'm in the same boat. It's a fun age. You know, you're still kind <laughs> of their hero. You hadn't become the bad guy yet. Do like me and just enjoy this time. I'm going to enjoy it as long as it'll last. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, how about any any uh, resources that you enjoy from a personal standpoint? Podcasts or YouTube channels, books? You mentioned the Peloton app, so that's definitely something there. But 
anything that you enjoy consuming that you think others may? Yeah, so I am a big reader. I always have been. Uh, it's the way I learn best. So the two books that I really have enjoyed are Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And that's how we really came to understanding our why as a company. And then even your why as a person individually. But the other one that has resounded with me lately, too, is uh, Make Your Bed by Admiral McRaven. Okay. Both of these are just pretty easy reads, but with really impactful ideas mm -hmm. that you can put to use right away. Uh, Cynic's book, Why, I love it. It's a great book, great resource, Eco Ask Why. A lot of that came, you know, the three circles. You know, I love what he's doing there. So any any podcast or anything like that that you that you find yourself enjoying? So my favorite podcast is called Grounded by Inspiring Time, T-H-Y-M-E. And it's actually produced by my sister. And she is featuring women entrepreneurs. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely put a link to that podcast in our show notes for the listeners. So they can check that out. So, you know, thanks for sharing those resources, Ashley. And how about... We love to do a lightning round. It's fun. It's random. It just gets our listeners to know uh, you a little bit about you uh, outside of work. As, uh, again, just on some fun topics. So you, if you're willing to play, we'll jump right in. Sounds good. All right. How about your favorite food? Uh, it's got to be fried chicken and mainly because I can't find it in the north. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to come by, huh? <laughs> they do a great chicken wing, but right. not a good chicken tender. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Any, uh, how about uh, adult beverage? Uh, Sauvignon Blanc. All right. Okay. All-time favorite movie? Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. That's a first. Okay. A favorite <laughs> music? <laughs> uh, anything country. Country girl. Got it. How about, what's on your nightstand? A pile of books. <laughs> a pile of books. <laughs> Just working through those books, right? I am. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm an Amazon junkie. <laughs> I love it. I love. It. I, have, I have books stacked up too, and my wife does too. It's it's crazy. It's like a library in our <laughs> bedroom. But uh, yeah, that, that's okay. How about sports teams? Uh, I gotta go with Auburn. Auburn. Any professional teams? Um. Well, it kind of depends upon the city we're living in. When we lived in Charlotte, we were Carolina Panthers. When we lived in Pittsburgh, we're the Steelers. When we now that we're in Erie, we're the Bills. <laughs> okay, okay, got you. So you kind of just float with where you're at. Makes sense, makes sense. How about somewhere uh, you hadn't been yet, but you, you got to go one day? So Spain was on the bucket list. Drew and I turned 40 last year and had the trip planned with the kids, and um, it got canceled. So mm. still on the bucket list. Still on the list. How about somewhere you have been that you think other people you really highly recommend? So one of our favorite local trips that you also can't go on right now is just right across the border to Niagara on the lake. It's okay. absolutely gorgeous wine country in Canada, um, but we, we hope to get back across the border one day soon. Okay. How about uh, any guilty pleasures? Guilty pleasures? Well, you're probably a runner, so... A I was going to say probably reading a book with a glass of wine in my hand. Okay, okay. <laughs> See, I do the running so I can have the M and M's. You know, I mean, it, 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 they kind of <laughs> equal themselves out because there's something yeah. about them. But there's a guilty pleasure there. How about my uh, tagline should probably be "Running for wine." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And last but not least, how about pets? Dogs or cats? Oh, uh, we've got a dog. She's about 18 months old. Um, charcoal lab and she's a hot mess i hear you, I hear you. well you didn't get the answer right because there is only one right answer so great good job on that one so uh, that was a fun lightning round thank you ash i really enjoyed that and definitely yeah, that was fun got to our listeners got to know a little bit more about you for sure so we 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 wrap up eco ask why ashley with the why and it's all about your passion so somebody wants to come up to you and want to know what your personal why is what would that be so my personal why goes back to, you know, growing up in Tennessee and having that one manufacturer in town. And had they left, our town would have been devastated for it. And you can see that all along the Ohio River here in Pennsylvania, all those steel mills that have closed. And if you live in a town where the manufacturer's closed, you understand exactly what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. my goal is to help keep manufacturing in small town USA. 
Well, I love it. I mean, hats off to you. You are definitely our hero. Uh, and for our listeners, again, if you want to connect with Ashley, check the show notes out. You'll find a way to get to her on LinkedIn as well as her book. The other wonderful resources that she mentioned throughout this conversation will be there as well. Ashley, you know, hats off to you. I love Grit and Grace. Thank you so much for what you're doing, for how you're leading, just for the, the intentional person that you are. So it's been wonderful uh, to get to know you here. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris, for producing this podcast. I think it's amazing content for all of us out here in manufacturing. Well, thank you, ma'am. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.